As commodity prices have been coming down over the course of the last year, year and a half, one of the things we've really been looking at hard on our farm, and farmers are all around the country, is how do I get the most out of my fertilizer investment? It all starts with soil testing, and then to take it a step further, variable rate fertilizer, that's our topic now. Well, it's certainly a practice that's been growing in popularity across the country. And I've talked to a lot of farmers that have said, well, there's only one outfit around me that does variable rate application. And I said, well, why don't you do it? Well, I guess I could do it, but I kind of need somebody to help me put together the files to show me what rates to put in different areas. And again, I say, well, why don't you just do it yourself? And they say, well, are there tools available to help me do that? Absolutely. Uh, one, for example, that we know pretty well is the Ag PhD soil test app. When you're pulling your soil samples, the data actually goes into a file that you can use to create your own variable rate fertilizer maps. Whether you're going to apply it or you're going to have somebody else do the application, either way, you can have the control of setting up those files. For example, this year on our farm, we're looking very hard at profitability for next year. How can we better manage our ground so we can make more money? Well, let's put fertility in the areas of the field that need it and in other areas of the field that, that don't need as much fertility or won't respond to that fertility rate, we're gonna change that up and put on a little bit less in those spots. Or maybe there's certain nutrients, like we were looking at potassium on our farm and saying, wow, here's some areas or some zones on our farm that really need more potassium. Here's others where our build program over the last 10 years has been great and we don't need so much over there. We can vary that application going across our farm, reduce our total fertility inputs, and hopefully increase our profits next year. Okay, I wanna come back to making those maps. Yes, you can get controller files off the free Ag PhD soil test app if you would like to do that. You can also take take something like your own soils maps, your yield monitor maps, a varus cart map, anything like that, and make your variable rate fertilizer map as well. It's really not that difficult. Hey, there are a lot of software programs that you can do this very simply. That is a great point though. You know, coming off the extreme drought we had in 2012 yep. and 2013, there were guys in our own area and on our own farm that had sand well, spots out in fields that absolutely yielded zero and the yeah. crop was dead in July. Right, where we had zeros, we didn't put any more fertilizer out there. We put last year's fertilizer out there. It didn't get used. So we put no fertilizer out there the next year, well obviously your profitability is pretty good when you get a normal yield and put no more fertilizer out there. Now granted we had to suffer through the zero of 2012, but hey that's the way it goes, but that's one of the things that you can look at real easily with the yield monitor. But again, I mean you can use soil test data, yield monitor maps, uh, there are all kinds of different ways to do it. It's just take a few minutes and do it. It's not very difficult. We do it on our farm. The other thing we've looked at a lot, and we could talk about this too, is variable rate lime. I think that's just an absolute no-brainer. Looking across our that's soil test. the best tests, thing to variable rate. Our soil test this fall, we've got spots, you know, where a whole field, every pH out there is in the sixes. It looks really pretty good. And then we see a 5.5. Well, bam, we can just put lime in that spot. We can fix that and bring the pH up in that area. And guess what? It doesn't have to be a low yielding zone on our farm anymore. Just by putting on lime in that one spot and not wasting our money on lime where we don't need it across the farm, right there, it pays for a lot of the technology you may have to purchase to be able to do variable rate yourself. Well, talking about purchasing, for us on our farm, this is the first year we've switched over a spinner spreader to variable rate and it costs three to four thousand dollars yes i know there's some cost there but if i can adjust things as i go throughout the field it's thousands and thousands really tens of thousands of dollars i'm saving on fertilizer or put it another way if i can take my dollars here out of my poor area put it into my good area or put it into an area that actually needs it it's a better return on investment for me it's a better place to invest the money it's just like anything else think about if you have any retirement plan you got any stocks whatever what would you like to do you You'd like to take your non-performers, take that money, put it into the high performers. That's what we're talking about. That's what you can do with variable rate fertilizer. Now, certainly if you own the ground and you just want to build, you can do that. But if you look at in the U.S., about half the ground is rented. That's a lot of acres out there. You want to put fertilizer out there, get it back this year. So it's all about soil testing and variable rate fertilizer if you want to maximize your fertilizer dollar. Look, when variable rate technology first came out to the fertilizer market, it was really expensive. I know in our area, uh, I think there was one retailer, they were charging like $10 an acre just to design the maps and to do the application. Plus, you still had to pay for all the fertilizer. And people thought, wow, for another 10 bucks an acre and fertilizer really wasn't that expensive at that time. A lot of guys said, you know, I'll just over apply by right. 10 bucks before I'll give somebody $10 for just blue sky dreaming. But now, you know, this variable rate technology with the equipment most of us already have with our planters, with our tractors, with spreading equipment that we may be using on our farm. You know, there's a small investment that we have to make. Yeah, like you said, maybe it's a well, few thousand bucks, but compared to $10 an acre that we were paying for stuff a few years back, 
it's really pretty inexpensive. Yeah, so on our farm, we're doing variable rate anhydrous, variable rate dry fertilizer with the spinner spreader, and variable rate strip till with dry fertilizer then. We can also do variable rate stuff with the planter. So, I mean, we've got a number of ways we can do this. And here's one thing I want to bring it back to. We've talked a little about economics. For the most part, it's a really good deal. As long as you're doing it yourself, you're not investing a lot of dollars that way. There's no problem. There's no reason why you shouldn't do that. But the other side of it is the environmental issue. Okay, especially with nitrogen. We know on our farm, we've got some soils that won't hold much nitrogen. Nitrogen, I want to cut those rates back to make sure we're not going to lose that nitrogen. So it's a really big thing. It's important not just for your economics, but also for the environment. Well, one other thing that's very important on the farm is controlling our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 